Aha! This is Laborts, and it is so nice to have you here. These are the paints you need. As always, we start with the skin, because that's one of the innermost part of the miniature. I'm using Burnt Red for the shadows. You can cover everything with this color, even the crevices. This bard is a jolly guy, so we will make a bright skin tone for him. Mix some KDM flesh tone to the burnt red and sketch out the highlight areas. Leave some brown recess shadows between his double chin or uh, double chins because he has some uh, folding going on and move the highlights toward the face. On his right forearm, I wasn't sure if it was part of the cloth or skin, but I painted the skin, so depending on your miniature, decide as you see fit if you want to paint the forearm as uh, cloth or skin. Now add more KDM flesh tone and reduce the highlight areas. Use thin layers so your colors will blend in like Granny's medicine with her oatmeal. And try to be very careful around his meaty face. Uh, you need some recess shadows around the eyes. I didn't find any eyeballs on the sculpt, so I painted him as he squinted with while he was singing. Look at him, he's so happy and fat. I really like this mini. Now push the contrast with pure KDM flesh tone. Usually, the higher I go with value, the thinner paint I use. This gives me some room for error if I make a mistake, it's not going to be very visible. If you are more comfortable using thicker layers, then just use some stippling around the areas you like to blend, making little dots with your brush. I cover the red parts with some word barrels red. These are the mustache, hat, belt and frisk. I skipped the hat actually, but later I paint it with word barrels red too. I sketch the highlight areas with Evil Sun Scarlet. On the wrist guards I cover 50% of the surface and 80% on the belt. He has some ribbons around his cloth. I highlighted the top part of them, but later we will do some airbrushing, so if you want to do the cloth uh, with an airbrush, I would advise that you skip those ribbons for now. After that I add some Wild Rider highlights over the wrist guards and the belt, but only around 40% of the surface, so our mid-tone stays this very nice saturated red. I forgot to cover his moustache uh, with Evil Sun Scarlet, so I did that and covered 70% of the hair. I tried to make some thin line by the end of the moustache, so the previous uh, darker layer still can show through between the red lines. Then I add some highlights with red skin flesh towards the center of the moustache and the eyebrows. If your eyebrows blend in too much with the skin, just paint them with black first and try to leave some of that black a tiny bit between the skin and the eyebrow so it would look more defined and crispy. Lastly, I mix some ice yellow to the red skin flesh and apply the brightest highlights at the top of the eyebrow and around the center of the moustache. This color created a nice red hair effect, so it's a nice recipe if you want to paint a red head miniature. On the hair, I use the exact same colors and move the highlights toward the front and emphasize some smaller folds along the way. Now it's time for the suit. I covered everything except the parts uh, that face down with this color. I forgot to shake the bottle properly, so it turned out to be super glossy, but I will take care of this later. I sketched the highlights with a mix of angel green and German camo green. I used the painted version of the miniature as a reference, so I put a link for that in the video description. For the back, I just used my highlight reference photo attached to the Patreon post. Basically, you want to cover everything that faces up and connect the folds that face down with some thin layers. After that, I went in with some pure German camo green and reduced the highlight areas that face up. This is a bit slower process because these greens are not covering very well and the robes are quite big, so the surface is big as well. Other than that, it's a fun process and if you use thin layers, your highlights are going to blend in smoothly. I mixed some ice yellow to the German camo and highlighted all the folds with their edges that faces up. In other areas, I just reduced the highlight areas and used stippling. Before I applied a couple layers of glaze to make sure that all the layers are nice and smooth like Granny's butt cheek. The 
green was a bit desaturated throughout the process, so I decided to grab the airbrush and add some yellow to the highlights. My compressor is at uh, 3.5 psi and uh, the consistency is one part paint and uh, one and a half part water. It's quite thin, so you need to apply the color with very small bursts uh, from the airbrush. I went over all the green highlights that uh, faces up. Then I did the same for the shadows with Nagarot Knight. Same consistency like with the yellow. This is much faster this way. If you don't have an airbrush, you can do this with a brush, but it will take more time. Just make sure your brush motion is always the same and the glaze consistency is quite thin. Some shadows became a bit too big, so I went back with German Camo and reintroduced some green highlights. These yellowish greens and the dark purple created a nice tonal variation on the robes and I was happy with the result. Always try to implement the airbrush more to your painting routine because it will speed up your process tremendously. Lastly, I add some more highlights with pure flash gits yellow with a brush this time so I could be more precise with the placement. After that I used dried bark on the pants and furry parts on the head and on the gold binding of the cloak. Then I sketched the highlights with talons sand. On the furry part you can apply the paint in small patches and dots to enhance the furry texture and leave some dried bark to show through. On the gold parts don't mind the little rivets, just treat the whole strip as one continuous surface. Later you can paint the rivets black and highlight them separately, but it would take so much time to paint around them, so let's not make our life harder than it is. Ok? Ok. Reduce the highlight areas with the mix of talan sand and ice yellow. On the head use stippling and try to pick out some hairs for texture. On the gold parts just create smaller sections and edge highlight along all the bindings. Now with pure ice yellow we create the brightest highlight areas in the center of the furry part on the head and edge highlight next to the brightest highlight areas on the gold parts. The rest of the NMM parts are covered around 70% of the surface with medium sea grey mixed with uh, black and focusing on areas that are face up. Then reduce those areas with pure medium sea grey and edge highlight the metal binding on the barrel. I tried to create a bit diagonal highlights to make the shape a bit more interesting. For the brightest highlights I used sky grey and edge highlighted the parts that face towards the front. Mix some ochre brown with rhinox height to highlight the wood parts. Try to make lines on the barrel to imitate some wood grain texture and highlight the top half part of the loot uh, with this color. I also went back on the pants uh, to add some extra detail. Then I used red skin flesh to highlight the barrel more along with the boots. I only use this color on the right side of the boots. After that I made a little freehand on the loot with a mix of ice yellow and flesh gits yellow. Thanks to the ice yellow this will have a nice coverage. I just try to recreate the shapes from the reference picture, so I have no idea what these uh, scribbles mean, but it makes the loot cooler in uh, my opinion. Make sure that the consistency that you are using is flowing nicely from the brush, but not too runny, so you can create some sharp lines. I decided that the head needed a bit more contrast, so I mixed more ice yellow to the talent sand and applied a few patch of highlights uh, on the furry parts again. Following the same tough, I used some Kisle flash on the face, mostly on the right side, so our light source is more clear. With that, Dylan the Bard is done and ready for the table. If you are interested how I painted the base, just check out my how to paint uh, stone tile bases for miniatures video. So thank you for joining me on this little painting adventure. A huge thanks to my Patreons who support this kind of videos. 
with special shout out to Jonathan Rhodes, Coldwell Dom, Trying to Pain Minis, Jonathan Mosner, Rulezak, Vlad D, Örtepöl21, One Shop Joe Crafts, Glitchy McCrash, and Guillaume Belanger. If you want to support the work of Papa Labors, you can do that on Patreon, where you will have early access to these videos and you can vote on the next mini. Or if you need a little bit of extra help, online coaching is also available. I hope the rest of your day will be as smooth as a granny's bachi.